reach the knife. Perfect. Microphone's on. Do you um? Do you like the door? I think so. Uh, did you shut up your present? Uh, I think so. Yeah, door's locked. Door is locked. I could have got it. I was got I'm closer. You gotta walk around the whole whole damn car. I got it. Got it? Alright, cool. Woo! What is up everyone? Happy Saturday. Boy, have we got a bunch of stuff to talk about today. Don't worry, as always, we'll get to your questions, but we do have some stuff we want to cover mm -hmm. in the beginning. What is the beginning? Were. But while we're waiting for everyone to sign in, log in, have fun, get get their get their you know, get ready for a show to be shown. It's a Cali. Um Oh, it's a lot of people right now. I don't know, where are the comments? Cincinnati. Where are the comments? I don't know. Comments? Oh, no. It's going to like, boom. There, boom. Okay, good. You asked for the, what's up, James? <sighs> All right. What's up, John? How's everybody doing? How's the weather today? Audio. Who's back Francisco. to work? Who's not back to work? Yeah. Um, is anybody still enjoying time off? Mr. Robert Boone. Wait. Yeah, truck true. driving for America. What's up, Jeff? Drive for America. <laughs> he is. He's truck driving for America. Making sure we all get our essential toilet paper. Yeah. If I know stretch of the means of my essential. But I am here. And we are wearing these shirts for a reason, which we'll get to right in there. a second. Um, once we get the shout outs, weather is okay. Perfect. That, that's great to hear. I'm, I'm raining here. Snowing. Oh, Snow. Canada. Trinidad. You know, oh yeah, Canada, Canada. Man, I... You know, it's funny, as hot as it is right now, just to think like it, it could be snowing somewhere. Yeah, yeah. It's just really kind of blows your mind. It is crazy, man. Yeah. That was hot today. It I was. feel it was hot. Yeah, well, I, I mean, know. it's, you know, snowing in PA, snowing in, snowing in Toronto, man. UPS. Yeah, that's right. UPS people, too. Yeah. Well, cool. Cool. Found two blown fuses. Isn't that the story of like, yeah, ah, I found a blown fuse today. Yeah. Uh, I'm working on, on medical parts. Perfect. Ooh, hey. You're more essential than we are. That's right. Um, so anyways, uh, why are we wearing the I'm Essential shirts? Real simple. This is wirecare.com. A lot of you guys know who Wirecare is. Let me let me lighten this up just a little bit. Or a little dark bit more, so yeah. You can see it a little better. Uh, thank you. Thank you, guys. We actually reached the 1,000 followers on the Dean and Fernando Car Stereo Clips. So now we actually have a live, yep. All right, so why are we promoting this and why are these two handsome guys right here with the group of all these others? Because, well. Let's go, let's go, can you, can you I'm zoom gonna, in? I'm gonna zoom in, I'm gonna zoom in. There you go, there you go. Okay. All right, so wirecare.com. Uh, we've, we've done this with them before, but we're doing it again. And they are giving everyone, so they wanna give back and they're gonna be giving money to Feeding America. So if you guys are working on your cars or you finally want to get around to getting your own custom heat shrink, so you want to get some of that cool heat shrink, you know, that has your logo on it or your name on it, it's really not as expensive as you think, especially if you do just like one color with your name. Mm -hmm. um, so if you visit wirecare.com slash WCFA, that's Wirecare Feeds America, so WCFA, and you spend $25 or more, you're gonna get this t-shirt. So you're gonna get you're gonna get this t-shirt in your size. And also if you get if you order early, you'll get a set of safety glasses. Now all others will get the shirt uh, for free when you spend 50 bucks or more, but if you use that URL, Wirecare Feeds America, so W C F A okay um, spend $25 or more you'll get the shirt and then at the end of the month 5% of all of their sales 5% are gonna go towards that charity so what they're trying to do is just you know give back help feed now what do they sell here Teflex loom tools all the really cool stuff oh, that yeah. you need special adapters Connectors. and harnesses Zip ties. Crimp tools. Oh, they, they sell a lot of stuff. Everything that involves wiring, these guys make. So For under the hood, like it's... You, you name yeah, it, they yeah. got it. They, they, they have a lot so of stuff. So you definitely want to check it out, um, and you'll save... You'll, you'll, you won't save anything. You'll get the shirt, but you'll also be helping Feed America the charity. So we just wanted to let that go. Yeah. Let you guys know what we got. Oop, we're going to go back out here. There you go. 
And that's that's that. We wanted to get that out of the way. Now, of course, like everything else we do, we'll be talking about that more as time goes on. But for right now, we can move this out of the way. Got it. I got it. You got it. Because yeah. what's behind door number two what's behind number one is the kicker quad box. That's the quad box in there, guys. Can you can you I'm gonna lighten it up. Hold on. It's just it's just got it just got dark. It's coming, it's coming. Relax. Okay. Relax. That better? Ooh. Hey, that's a lot better. Okay. Yeah, All right, so we got the quad. Oh, that's way too much. No, 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 no. That's perfect. Does it look good because you can you can see the letter. That's fine. We don't okay. care about us. Well, oh, where's yeah, Dean? We do care. I don't about know where's us. Dean. That's <laughs> <laughs> gonna say. No, it's fine. Hold on. You're hold fine. On. Let me just. No, I'm not. Let me do one down. Ah, uh, that is too much. Relax. Right there. Right there. Um. So, anyways, the kicker quad box is in the car. It is functioning. It is playing. And so what we thought we'd do is at the end of the video, for those of you guys that stick around for it, we'll fire it up and play it. Um, we're going to do a whole review on it, all that fun stuff, but we wanted to get it, and we didn't film it. We just wanted to get it in today. We have the 2400 is just stuffed in the side there, yeah. and we tuned it all up. We're using the Key 501 as a preamp because the KX will take up to 10 <laughs> volts of output. Yeah. So we're feeding it. We just turned the gains all the way down. And that the reason way we can keep the uh, EQ. The reason why the amplifier is like that is because these box have to go back. Oh, everything's so, going back. Just... So. But we get to play with it in the meantime. Yes. So it's in there. We'll play it at the end of the show because, we, you know, why not? Why but not? That's, that's what's going on. So we thought we'd bring it in and show it to you, and it's stupid loud. Um, and, of course, the question you guys are always going to ask, SPL and all that, I don't know. We're ordering an SPL meter so we can test it. That's so right. I talked to Big D Wiz, and he's like, buy this one. So... Um, Hopefully we'll get that in before it has to go back and we can do a little SPL on it, see what it's doing. Test, SPL test. Um, what, a couple other things we wanted to hit before we get to the questions. Hey, from Canada. So yes, I drink it. I drink it. I like it, man. With tequila, it's awesome. Q class or GS? Wow, oh, that's a tough one. Hmm. I don't know. Uh, you know, somebody asked that the other day. I gave a really good comparison between the two. Um, you know, the GS is big and deep and the kicker Q is well actually both of those are big and deep yeah <laughs> I don't know I honestly I, I I don't have an answer for that one I'm sorry I don't know because they're both really neat mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I had a shrimp pulled by last night anyways for those of you that don't know and some of you have already taken advantage of this audio control has let us know the, a couple of you guys actually quite a few of you guys mm -hmm. out there have taken advantage of this the DMRTA Pro is the ultimate tool for the car stereo installer, whether you're a professional or a consumer or whoever it is, if you want to be the pro. Now, this is called a pro because it's the most expensive version of this tool. It's $899. However, if you use the coupon code 5STAR, you will get $100 off this. So, you'll save $100. Bucks. There again, if, now, if you do want a DMRTA, there are cheaper versions of the DMRTA That's that you fine. can purchase. However, the only one you're going to get a discount on is this one. Now, keep in mind, what comes in this kit is everything. The microphones, the test probes, all the fun stuff that you could possibly need. We did do an unboxing the other day live. So yep. if you want to, like, if you're like, what are you Check guys? it out. Go ahead and check that out. Um, but inside the box, just, just, just to give you a quickie. What's up? Not uh, that kind of quickie. Of Jason, course, you get how your, you doing, buddy? You get your instruction manual, and then all the stuff is in there. And yes, we all know you guys with the OCD, like myself, this makes you feel really good about things. So That's they did new. a really nice job, oh, and ah, it smells new. It just smells really new. Oh my god! Yeah. What are you doing? yeah. <laughs> oh, foam! Yay! So if you want to save, we should leave it. We should leave it all bit. So if you want to save a hundred bucks on it, there you go. It's right there. We'll just set it. So check it out, DMRTA. Actually, I don't want to leave it there. We'll just set it down here. Um. <laughs> can't, re can't drink tequila. It makes me really different. Ah, I, to everybody, So man. this was the coupon Not code. We'll you. show it again at the end of the show. Yes. One other thing that happened this week was we got a box. Not this particular box. This is another box from Sound Digital. We had a good time opening that up. This is a second box from Sound Digital. We just didn't have time to open it up this week, so we we're going to save this present for... Next week. We're just saying next week. I don't know what day we're going to okay, do it. Next week. But we do have... Yes, I know. It could fall on my foot. So, yeah. Be Anyways, careful. we'll save this one for next week. So we do have another Sound Digital product to play with. 
Uh, so thank you guys from the uh, Sound Digital. Yeah, and then one more thing, audio control. We did some more audio control this week. So the AC, uh, the AC, ACXs, ACX. these are the marine versions. Yeah. We had the pleasure of opening these up and taking a quick look at them. And no, we gotta wait, gotta wait. Next, next, it's gotta be next week. Gotta have something to do next week, man. Slow it down. Si, si, hablo español. So we did open these up. These are their new marine amplifiers. We have some really fun in store that we're gonna do with these um, for testing. And I just, cause I've always wanted to do it with marine, and I think these are the marine amps to do it to. Mm -hmm. So um, we'll just leave that on the table for right now. If you have any questions about them, of course, feel free to ask. One other thing about audio control, for those of you guys that are audio control fans, on Facebook, and if you're not, you should be, but if you're a fan on Facebook, every Thursday, they do live trainings for anyone, anybody. It doesn't matter whether you're in industry, out of industry, you have a Facebook account, you like audio control, you can head over there and, you know, He's gonna, watch he's gonna, it. Uh, yeah, it's gonna die, gonna so I'm die. just gonna close it. Yeah. That's from all the laser work today. All right, um, so. That's it, that's all I got. That's all that I got. All right, first, first question, <sighs> it's for Ramon Nunez. $5, thank you from Ramon. Are you guys working? <laughs> Are you guys working normally or not yet? Cause I want to go to make you install Pioneer inline amp on my car. Yes, we are working, we're back. Yeah, we um, started this week. If you wanna call Paul, 727-216-6170 uh, so you can make an appointment and you can set up uh, whatever you want to do in your car and uh, yeah, we can do it. Yeah, that's, this this week I spent so much time on oh, the phone. Oh, yes, a lot of I time, mean, I dude. Was, I today? was on the phone Ooh. all week. David, David Monroe, Just thank you, man. He so always dropped the $10, thank hopefully you. Hopefully, whoever I talked to this week, uh, Paul got back to. Yeah. Um, Cause I, oh, so I was like, I don't think Dean came today, too. Dude, it was rough, it was rough. But that's okay. So what do you got? This week was awesome. Yeah, all right, so hang on, I'm trying to... No, no, take your time, moment. take your time, it's all right. Um, precious moments. It is precious moments, man. Precious moments. Uh, there you da, go, da, 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 da. there you go. Hey, perfect, look at that. Look at that, that it makes perfect. it so much and easier. And with that, we're going to go with John. Yeah. She dropped nine ninety nine. Loving it. Just a tad, can get a Dean and Fernando signature on my Sound Digital banner. Did you send it already? I have not said it yet. There no, I'll, I'll bring it. Um, see, the thing is, it's cloth. I don't know. We'll give it a try. Yeah, I'm we Sharpie. Not, yeah, all right. I have new silver Sharpies, so yes. I'll... Uh, this shirt's irritating me. Um, oh, that's pretty cool. I know. It's, it's just itching me. Um, so, yeah, no, I'll bring it back, and we'll sign it. So, yeah, that's fine. Because Sue hasn't sent it out yet. She was gone. All right. All right. Um, is the steering wheel adapter for a 2001 Town and Country Limited? So that's going to be part of the smart module. When, when you're doing steering wheel controls in a Chrysler, this, you, you're going to get a, an interface, unless you buy an access, in which case you're just going to buy the access external steering wheel control module. Mm -hmm. um, but you're going, to be, you know, you're going to buy an RP4, and that's going to have steering wheel controls built into it from PAC. Or you're going to buy an, a, an iData RR, and that's going to have steering wheel controls built into it. So for a Chrysler, since 2005, you needed a smart harness. And it also it uses a CAN bus um, in order to just do standalone steering wheel controls. You can use the Pack Audio CP2 because it's a CAN bus <coughs> reader and just add in steering wheel controls to it, and it will give you an accessory output. That's kind of like the only hack to adding steering wheel controls to those. But we never do that. We just go for the RP product or the RR. What's up, product. Bobby? Yeah. All right. 2011 try Challenger. Not, try, try not to yell. I'm sorry. Just, just pause so we can okay. cut them up so that the questions can be on Dean and Fernando's car stereo clips. That's right. I All don't right. know, right? That's All right. Crazy. Let's go. 2011 Challenger with Boston Acoustic stock system. Uh, I bought the XP6903 the speakers. Yeah. Do I need crossovers provided for three and a half? keeping the stock set up for now. No. So the, the factory will already have a crossover in there. So when you, if you have the Boston Acoustic, the Bose, the Beats by Dre, the whatever it is, um, in that particular Chrysler, there again, product, 
it's active out of the amplifier, so you can just drop in a set of three and a half, and they'll already play the frequencies they're supposed to play because the factory three. It's, so yeah, you don't have to do anything; just put them in. I will say the only thing that sucks about what you're doing, um, if you use a six by nine of the door, that let's say a two-way or or anything with a tweeter on it, you'll not hear the tweeter because the door is the especially the front door is the factory subwoofer, so there'll be no high frequency that comes out of that door. Um, that's why we always say like go with the Kenwood Exelons because that's actually a mid-bass driver that's designed to work with that factory system. But once you take out the factory amplifier and go to a normal amplifier, if it does have a tweeter, then you're rock and rolling. High Five Vegas in the house. A tip for the pack TR12 video. It saved my life. I'm glad we could help. And yes, that. The, the TR12, uh, which is also on DNF tool drawer, mm -hmm. and the and the specialty item page oh, really? where all the it where is? all the install goodies are, um, is a lifesaver. It does a lot of things. Like when uh, Andrew called me the other day, and he's like, "What did he need it to do? He needed something to like when he was cranking through ignition. Uh, there was a pause that it would shut off, and then turn back on. It was just enough that it was screwing up the. the it was an older car it was screwing things up. I was like. Why don't you just use a TR12 and program it for once it sees that first trigger to stay on? And he's like, dude, that's what I was thinking. I need to do that. All so, right. That Angry... piece is dope for show. <clears throat> Definitely. All right. Okay. Angry A say, I need to, you guys to do an I-11 on my 2020 RAM. I spent $1,300 having my JL audio gear installed and found the C3600 crossovers hanging by the wires under the dash. Who knows yeah. what is a jug top? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just call Paul and make an appointment. And ah. for right. that, you normally have to bring the car, so we have to see what's yeah, going yeah. on. Yeah. All right. Hold on. Um. Go. Uh. What am I? Oh, that's. I'm like. Why? Why is this not working? <laughs> hold on. I was trying to get to. Can I use the LCQ one after the Bose amplifier and a 2019 Nissan Armada? So here's the thing in that particular vehicle. Yes, you can use an LCQ one after any amplifier you want. It's an EQ, it's uh, six bands for one, six bands for the other, and five bands for, I was looking for the one that we have laying around here somewhere. Oh, here it is. Uh, where do you buy the RTA and where can you find the coupon? You go to the audiocontrol.com. Hold on. And just that's take, it. Just take a screenshot right, right there. That's it. Okay, all right, so check it out. This is the LCQ1 for those of you guys who don't know. Think of an LC7i on steroids. So it is an LC7i that has an analog EQ section for channel one and two, three and four, five and six. Now, anytime, whether you're doing it in the car you have or any car for that matter, if you're gonna go after the amplifier, this is a high level to low level adapter. But before you spend money on something like this, especially nowadays, what you need to do is first, Go and check and see if they make any form of Amp Pro for your car. So that is if go to pack .com, go to metroonline.com, go to navtv.com, go to idatalink.com. All right, those are the four sites you're gonna check to see if they make any type of interface for your vehicle. For that car, don't worry, you don't have to. Nissans, they don't make anything for. However, some Nissans are what's called variable voltage out of the head unit, meaning at the amplifier, it's just like a regular preamp. So there's there's no RCAs, but there's wires that are like RCAs, but they're in a plug. Meaning, so when you put your voltmeter on them, they go up and down with the stereo. And then some are what's called fixed, meaning it's just line in and you do this and nothing happens because it's actually controlling it from the amplifier. These are things you have to find out before you go and buy one of these, okay? Because there's a lot of things that that amplifier is doing that if you can take out of the equation, you want to. Now, with that being said, let's say it's a fixed level input in your amplifier. That means you're going to hook this up to your Bose amp. You're not going to be summing when you have Bose, especially mm -hmm. in a 2018. So what that means is you have to do what's called channel for channel. Meaning if it has a tweeter output, that goes to one and two. If it has a mid-range output, that goes to three and four. If it has a rear output and you're gonna be using it, that goes to five and six. Now, as you see, you have a problem because there is no subwoofer input. So this is only, this is a limited amount of inputs. It's just six inputs. It's not enough 
if you have a 10 speaker, 12 speaker, that's why they make the LC8i. Um, now you can stack things, so a lot of the times we'll use something in the past, not anymore, but in the past we'd use something like this and we would put like an LC2i on the bottom of it for the subwoofer. So you have to know how many channels that you're trying to use. Um, and there again, you don't always need all the channels. So for example, if you don't, if like there's nothing happening in the rear channels, I mean there's no backup sensors, there's no beep, 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 beep going on back there, then you really don't need to retain them. You can come off of tweeter and mid here, bi amped into a set of rear speakers, or just use the mid out, don't worry about the tweeter, into a set of rear speakers. The caveat to that is that all the sound that comes through those door chimes, backup sensors, front sensors, Bluetooth call, navigation, are also gonna come out of the rear speakers. So it's not as simple as that. You have to do a little bit of homework before you start down that project. You just don't wanna buy something like this because these aren't cheap and just throw it in there and be like, yeah, it's gonna work. Might not. Okay, oh, and also if it is variable voltage, you don't want one of these because this is a high level to low level, not a low level to low level. So it won't, won't do you any good. At that point, um, buy like a DSP or find out how many channels you have and maybe a DSR1 or something like that. Okay, sorry. Why don't you guys, why, why don't you guys the Maestro steering wheel controls? Because most cars don't need steering wheel controls. I mean, we do very few cars have standalone steering wheel controls. So we've just never gone to them. It's a great steering wheel control interface. Yeah. But it's not CAN bus, so it really doesn't matter. All right, what do you think about the Mili, the Mili Legend? I want to hear your thoughts. Oh, we're going to, uh, sorry, Vega, we're going to do it at the end of the show. We've already done it. It's crazy as hell. We're going to do it at the end of the show. What was the, what was the question? What do you think about the Mili Legend? Oh, the Mili Legends? Yes. What do you think about the Mili Legends? I love the Mili Legends. You love them? Yes. They are quite impressive. They are awesome. Um, it is a big speaker. It is a really big speaker. It's a giant tweeter. So the only thing about it is make sure you have room for those tweeters because it's... It is big. It's a big tweeter. Yeah. yeah. It is a very sexy sounding tweeter because it is so big. Yeah. Uh, it's like the KRX-3s or KRX, KRX-2s, um, yeah. giant tweeters that come uh, as an option or but you can buy with the It sounds really nice. But yeah, so the thing is, is they don't fit in a lot of factory applications unless there's like a three and a half or a two and a half there. Yeah. So, but yeah, mm, fun stuff, yummy. Shout out, what's up Ringo? Um, okay, uh, quote of the year, Fernando, don't break the bag. <laughs> what's up? Everyone with the bag, when we open these, don't break the bag, man. Oh, yes. Don't rip the, it was don't rip the bag, but yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, have you guys installed the 8-inch mid-range speaker on on the front doors of what car? Because yes, we have put 8-inch mid-range speakers in the front of a lot of newer cars because they have the 6x9s and it's not that much different to go from that. However, most people still kind of lean towards the 6x9 and the price point between a 6x9 and an 8 is sometimes like, ooh, oh, I'll stick with the 6x9. Um, and now that everyone's making mid-base 6x9s, yeah. You know, it's it's kind of like a tough upsell. It's like, it's round, and round sounds better. All right, any shop Whatever. that you recommend in Houston, Texas? Um, there's a, quite a few in Texas. I mean, we always talk about Wiley, Texas, which is uh, loud and clear. Our boy's there. Johnny. Johnny Brolin. Um, but I don't know how, f I know Texas is a really big Houston. place. So it's probably, I don't it could know be where a two-hour uh, drive Chris to get Pitt. there. I don't know where it is. Yeah, Mobile Toys. Mobile I don't toys. know where Mobile Toys is either. Yeah. Uh, yes, Dino tweeters are are huge in top of yeah. Dino Audio is really nice. Yeah, and they're they're giant. See, because the Dino Audio, what they did is just said, hey, we'll just take our home stuff and put it in boxes and sell it in cars. All so right. you got this tweeter that's like the mount, anyways. Yeah. All right. Hang on. I was I was looking for here. Twenty nineteen. Uh, will that kicker box fit in a Ford Flex? I'm gonna say yes. Yes. Maybe. Yeah, I think the flex has more. Why is it at the end of the day we could never find our tape measures? All right, it's so everywhere. It's one right go. there on your bench. I know. We got 36 inches across. We got about 21 inches tall, and the box itself is 28 inches deep. And then once this door closed, we get an extra like three inches. So I mean, it's it's not kissing the door, but it's it's definitely uh, definitely really really close. All right. 2019 Ram Rebel, six-speaker system going 
to dual is the amp. Kenwood 6x9 component, DSR1, do I need an amp pro? I mean, if it'll take, if it's got the bigger screen, um, an amp pro is a good idea for sure. Uh, the other thing too is you want to make sure that it probably is going to have the ANC module up underneath the driver's seat, which will need to be bypassed. That's up to you as far as that goes. If it does have the ANC module underneath the dash, or underneath the, the driver's seat, did I say driver's seat? Mm -hmm. um, hold on. You'll need the ANC CH01, which is this from PAC. What it's designed to do is just bypass the ANC. It looks like an amplifier, it's not. Um, if you have the ANC, chances are you got a big enough screen. At that point, I would just go buy the AP uh, CH41 version 2 and get a cool, sexy preamp out of it and, you know, be happy. Or you can go with the iData and go into the DSR1, which is also really nice, about the same amount of money. And then for theirs, you just need this guy right here, which is the ACC ANC CH3. So, yeah, all good stuff. What do you got? All right. Let's 8 see. 8.4 inch screen. Yeah, get, get either the iData or the Amp Pro. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, I mean, the nice thing about the DSR1 in that is it's not that much more to go DSR1 and the, the harnesses you need compared to the Amp Pro. And, yeah, it's, it's like, and you get the DSP. All right, so T1005, Infinity 60 CSX. It's all four doors with a three-way upgrade on wow. the front doors. Running them of the passive crossover have extra T404 and one to go active. Can we handle the power? So, 60 CSX, it's all four doors with a three-way setup rate. Is there a question here somewhere? I'm trying to figure it out. All right, well, you, while you figure that out, I'm gonna, someone said here they got, they sent three emails and they've got no response. Have you tried to call yet? Um, I would suggest calling because like I said, this week I spent all, I, every day this week I was on the phone with somebody returning phone calls. So I, I don't know what's going on there. Um, I don't handle the email, is nothing to do with us. Um, if you call and you talk to Paul at the end of the day, I usually go over there and I get stuck returning three or four phone calls, designing systems for people and setting up appointments. So if you have not gotten through, it's either that or he just looked at it and said it's nothing he wanted to do. I don't know, but I would suggest calling 727-216-6170. All right. So and you can spell it with capital letters if you want. I, I don't know. Um, it's not going to help. I, I'm looking at you, Johnny. So just give him a call. I mean, if, if you've sent three and you haven't gotten anything, my guess is call. And if, you know, just do that. He, he's so busy. Um, so the question about the T1005, he want to go active, right? It's a T1005 with a three-way upgrade in the front speakers. Okay. Uh, a T404 is it's like an option for, go, for going after, active in the front that yes. we handle the infinity, the power. Well, I mean, so you have a T1005, it's four channels, and a sub. And a sub, yes. And then you're gonna buy a T404. Yes. Which is four more channels. So that's eight, eight channels, channels plus a sub. Mm -hmm. You have six speakers up front, and six speakers in the back. Well, we need, we need more, so really it sounds like you need two 1005s and uh, two and uh, you need two 1005s and a T404. So the T404, I would go with the mid, the mid bases. Yeah, and then two T1005s for the mid range, mid base, mid range. Or I'm sorry, mid range tweeter, mid range tweener, and then go for two subs. I mean, that's the only thing that kind of makes sense for me in that applications. If you're going to go active three way on front and rear, if you're just going to active three way up front, then yeah, you could do a 1005 for tweeter mid, and then get the T404 to do mid base and rear fill if you're just gonna do that. Uh, my, the tweeters on my car are bright. I like it. I don't um, like smooth tweeter. All right. I just woke up. What is it? What month is it? 
Uh, okay, hold on. You gotta update the other channel clips. I see no new vids. Um, yes, I will have, don't worry, this week you're getting all new, I mean there's a hundred videos up there, I don't think anyone's gonna bang through a hundred videos that quick, but no, there will be more videos, put a whole new batch of them up, and we just drop batches, so like, oh, that sounded terrible, we just drop lots, a batch of videos in the sense that there's usually like 10 or 15 that go up at once, that's why we didn't want them on this channel, because it'd just be great, it wouldn't work out. Um, as far as the difference between the two new, pine, the two new Kenwoods, uh, I don't know yet. I think the difference is the, the, the DM whatever one is the Mechalis one, meaning it doesn't have the CD player built into it, and that's the only difference. So this year in the, in the WR line, or yeah, the, the reference line, they're going to have navigation, non-navigation, non-spinning format. So that'll be the three sevens that are going to be available this year. All right, hey Dean. Yeah. Uh, Metro finally made a wiring harness for the 2019 Chevrolet Trax LT. Yeah. Uh, cool. the, the model number is the GMLN31. Have you had oh. any chance to mess with it? <laughs> and no. <laughs> and Clyde wire stray from the GMLN31 to my JL Fix 88, 86. I'm sorry. Uh, I have not had a chance to look at it yet. Um, hardness, I, no. It hasn't even been on my uh, hasn't even been on my radar yet. But I will try to take a look at it next week and, and see what's up. Uh, a lot of those pieces they've been talking about and haven't shipped. So I, when it comes to Metro and everyone else for that matter, I just kind of wait to see when stuff is actually available, and then then we kind of go from there. Um, can you open up the blue RTA box again and show again? Of course I can. Hang on a second. Ask another question. All right, let's see. I install full call integration components and coaxial rear doors with the Kenwood 906S and 901.5? Yeah, that's the amplifier. Okay. Uh, Gain a wine, a wine coming through the tweeters. I'm going to change the Stinger RCA is this week. Any, anything else at least I have to check? I mean, the well, RCs maybe. are a really good place to start right. um, if it's a wine and the tweeters. Make sure the gain isn't up too high, and of course, make sure you have a really good ground. Those are good those ground. are the simple things. It's like make sure your not your RCA. Make sure that the radio and the amplifier have a good ground because a lot of the times people don't think about it. Your radio could actually have a good ground because, like, when you replace the radio, you go from a metal bracket system to a plastic bracket system. And sometimes the manufacturer is using that metal bracket system as the ground of the radio. So depending on the car, you have to add an actual ground to metal because the one coming through the harness sucks. Um, so there's that. And of course, don't ground to a seat bolt. That's the worst. Um, I had to like, sand the paint off of the seat rail. And I was like, why did you do that? The rail is painted on the bottom. And it's just, so, you know, you need your good ground. Um, so this is the DMRTA in the box. You have the DMRTA underneath this is all the cables for the microphone. The USB cable is over here. You have all your test leads. You have your Bluetooth dongle. Here's your microphone. Here's your little gain guitar pick. There's two empty ones here so that as you grow you can add more things in. It's all laser cut foam. Power adapter. This does have a battery built into it so it will play all on its own for up to three hours. Um, but yeah, that's it. There you go. All right. So Jim, Jim is he's 54. Congratulations. Where do you, where do you get quality signal work like amplifying such as a CD? Uh, HDTracks.com is a great place to go if you'd like to purchase and own them. If uh, if you checked out the Sony video this week we did on the GS9, we uh, before we started in the car, we show you how to download them to an iPad and play them on the GS9. And then tracks, of course, you can buy those. We show you where HD tracks is. But yeah, you can buy high res tracks there. Um, a couple of people right now are uh, like streaming services that are pretty good. Uh, Tidal, if you're into that, and then Amazon has a new high-res streaming HD. service, HD, yeah. Amazon, Amazon HD. HD. 
uh, which also has really nice tracks that yeah. sound exceptional. Um, that was funny because Christian actually posted his <laughs> video about that. That's, that's pretty cool. Uh, Kicker Key 180.4 or Kenwood Exelon XR404 for the 6x9 components and 6.5 components. Kicker the speakers Key. Speakers are Kicker CS. It's, it's a Kicker. CS. You don't even have to finish it. It doesn't matter. Kicker Key. If you're going to go, it's, it's the Kicker Key is the way to go. Um, the yeah, uh, they also have the new 200.4 kicker key out, so uh, it is a little bit bigger, a little bit more power. Um, they physically are the same size, so here is the 804. I'm sorry, the 1.18, yeah, 18, yeah, you got it. The smaller one, here's the new one, um, they're exactly the same size, new packaging. I'm gonna tear the bag. I'm gonna be like Fernando, just rip the bag apart. Well, it's just the bag. Just the bag. Exactly. It's just a bag. There you go, see? You're not gonna need the bag anymore. That bag I won't need. But this one has a little bit more power. This is the one that's gonna go into this to take out the one, the, the smaller one. But, so, they're still identical in size. Exactly the same. Uh, color code is the same. They really just all they did was optimize it, and I can tell you the new one sounds really sweet. So um, um, I would say, yeah, no, you're gonna go with the Kenwood speakers. Those are good speakers to go with. Okay, go ahead. All right, uh, Uno Me 55. He dropped five dollars. Thank you. Thanks for the help, guys. I just wondered if the speakers will handle the power and active setup. The back doors are staying passive. Yes, they oh, will God, handle yes. the the active setup. Just make sure you get you you crossovers. Well, and no, your it, it does and all that. It's, the only thing you have to set on a kicker key is the game. No, 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 that's different. That's for all. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. he's worried if it take the power. Yeah, why yeah. would it take yeah. the power? So, power isn't the problem when, like, with speakers blowing speakers. Most speakers will handle way more power than you're ever going to give them. The problem is, is that. You know, people buy smaller amplifiers and then they want to turn the gains up on the amplifiers and they want to just, they're distorting the crap out of them and then they don't set the crossover properly. And then the speaker just, just doesn't know what to do with it. It's getting a lot of heat and then that heat just cooks the voice call and then poof, it all blows. So, yeah. All right, Dean, a pair of six and a half components plus a pair of six by nine plus Rokia around the speakers plus Two amplifiers aftermarket, Bluetooth, and one 12 inch in the box. Okay. Can I be done in one day coming from Wells Palm Beach? Probably no. 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 No, that's, that's no. Because I mean, the road kill takes, takes like an hour and a half to it's two an hour hours and a half of door. A door so yes. that's six hours to do four well, doors. And now, if you want to go like crazy. Yeah, but either way, kill. you're still looking at three yeah. or four hours that you're tied up doing yeah. the doors, the amp rack and amp yeah. board and all that stuff. Well, the, we the have cars, to rush it. I, I, yes. So, all right. We decided a couple years ago when we, you know, like, hey, this is, we're, I'm tired of working until nine o'clock at night and just busting our, it's, we work from nine, eight thirty. I actually work from about nine, nine thirty, ten 10 till six thirty, and then we're out. Um, in that time frame, we get as much work as we can get done. Of course, we're pulled away to do other things the whole time. Uh, and then we'd have to come back here and we'd just have to act like mad fiends to try to get stuff done. Mm -hmm. And then it's like you got to tune the car. Tuning the car could take, if it's just a basic radio, could take anywhere from an hour, you know, half hour to an hour just to tune a basic car, just like a radio, just tuning a radio, setting the gains, doing polarity checks, making sure everything works, balance, fader, all that fun stuff. It takes about an hour. Just to, just to make sure everything is, is playing. Mm -hmm. Is the tweeter working? Is, is everything in phase? Is it, all right, let's do some timeline on the desk. Let's test things. Let's listen to mm -hmm. it. Okay? If we're doing a DSP, doing a DSP yeah. that takes about three hours. Yeah. Okay? Two to three hours to do a DSP because we have to do all that other stuff, and then we have to set up the laptops, and we have to put in the microphones, and we have to lit. So it's like if you look at how many hours are in a day, typically there's not enough to do everything like and David then said, have yeah, two full days. this beautiful amp rack. I mean, those things take tons of time, man. And so we charge accordingly yeah. and it sucks. Yeah. But most people realize that they have these cool things locally called hotels. And we have one right around the corner. We have yeah. two. That are and I get it right now with this situation is going on. I get it, but. Oh no, 
Hey, hey, listen. It, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. uh, and just, you know, but we, we have a time frame that we work, and that's how we do it. And this is how we do it, baby. baby. Okay, anyway, David, thank you so much. He dropped fourteen ninety nine. Thank you, man. He just awesome. like drop it. He he dropped it like, right there. Drop uh, it. Pete. Was it hot? Yeah, that was uh, probably. Uh Pete, he dropped five dollars. Thank you, man. Dang, money's on fire. How much power should you run through Speedwire? I know it's only eighteen gauge. There again. Okay, don't think of this, the 18 gauge as like a power wire for an amplifier that's drawing major amperage, okay? It, it's not doing that. Um, look at the tensile lead on a tweeter. Look at the tensile lead on your speaker. They're very small. Um, 18 gauge speaker wire with the bandwidth that you're gonna be putting through it can handle a decent amount of power. We've put anywhere between 70 to 100 watts through it with no issues whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And cars that have been on the road for five, six, 10 years now. So. All right. I, I one see. million watts. <laughs> really, one million watts? Yeah, yeah, that's what it says. Yeah. Can I get one? Um, all right, I, I see several videos, you guys using the lining, the lining to HDMI adapter. Do you still use these adapters working even in aftermarket iOS updates? So, no, we don't use that anymore. I'm sorry, I was reading Victor's Okay, so laughing. no, we don't use that lining to, the lining adapter to the radio. Oh, and some radios HDMI? work, yes. Uh, we just got out of it. I mean, when it came, so the problem was is that we used to do, we used to worry about that thing as far as being able to, hey, how do I screen share? Correct. And then like all of a sudden overnight, it was like, you know what, let's let's just, because it, it was all consuming. Yeah. It was like everyone was, it's like, at the end of the day, like an iPhone, you buy the lightning to HDMI adapter, and then if your radio takes an HDMI adapter, and it was like, and then you need an LCQ, yeah. one, and then it's like, uh, I don't know. And, and for Androids, like a lot of people oh, have an Androids, it's worse because yeah. you have to have the right adapter for you, Android. So I, and, so I, and Android... I know there's, it's, it's one of those tough topics because it's like everybody wants it. But here's the thing that really sucks. Yeah. When you screen share your phone to your radio, it looks like crap yeah. because your screen is 480. This thing's putting out 1080. It's this like, is 1080. It's like playing. It's like playing Atari on your big screen TV at home. I love Atari. It's just it, yeah, I know, but it looks like <laughs> crap. I know, um, but yeah, normally it's just that's it. When they ask, we we normally yes, okay, we do it. But so someone asked about they have an iPhone. Will the morale sound better if they uh, sound dead in the door? And the answer to that is yes. Every speaker will sound better when you sound dead in the door or dampen the door, whatever you want to call it. Dead and dampen, shoot up the gun, call it a day. Anyways, remember, the more rigid the speaker is mounted to, the more rigid the surfaces the speaker is mounting to, and the more rigid the area behind the speaker is, the better sound you're going to get from it. The deeper mid bass you'll get, the more clarity that's going to happen. Because if you have a speaker sitting here moving, and then this is moving, and then you get this, and the thing starts clapping, that was a song, I think. You guys know what it is. Anyways, what happens is you get cancellation. All right, you get a lot of cancellation. Plus, then you get cavitation because now the speaker's moving and the metal's moving and all this fun stuff is happening. It's bad. So, yes. Now, whether you want to go full crazy, like, like you see these pictures, uh, you know, like Fernando does or whatever, you just need to concentrate on the speaker itself. Fast rings, they help a lot because there's that big piece of foam that goes behind there that will absorb a lot of that action coming towards it. And of course, the most important thing out of the whole fast ring is just making sure that the sound goes into the car. It's got to go into the car. If you, and when you pull that factory speaker out, it has foam on it that's man, that's, that's, the manufacturers know that like this is a good thing and but the first thing we do when we pull a car out and put new speakers in it is we go hey would you like a phone oh my god no no it's been a kind of money it's like the cheap speaker you just got had it and you're not willing to up to it so foam of any kind and there again if you want to buy fast rings you can just stack foam you can do whatever you want i don't care but yes get some form of, of foam or rubber or something to push that sound into the car it's very important very important <laughs> Do you do an install and don't laugh? <laughs> we we got to hook up Victor and uh, Jason. Uh, do we do an install and don't laugh? Uh, we did. We did an MBX before. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. no. Oh, that, that question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just 
No, right. actually, the, um, that, Which was one? it the Genesis or whatever it was from, like, three years ago, the guy from Texas? All that was MVX wire. Yeah. Yeah. No, I got nothing wrong with MVX. Hey, man. Uh, if you did. MVX had a nice fast train. Oh, cool. I didn't know that. Uh, just run it with no grills. Okay. okay. All right. So, Kevin, he drive far. Uh, I'm sorry. Kevin drive $10. Thank you, man. What's the best way to attack a 2019 Volkswagen T1? with the Fender sound system? Oof. So that's a tough one. Function. You want to go, <laughs> right now what you want to do, so there's a couple different things, depending on how savvy you are. Um, how we approach that car is, uh, well, so like if you, can, if you can get into the software for the car, you can reprogram it and kick out the Fender system, but then you have to be willing to do a full update. Okay. How did you gonna get into the software? Well, there's some, you know, hacking software, kind of like Forescan, okay. but there's a version of that for Volkswagen that, that we don't use, but there is, um, and you can go in and you can reset the radio back to just the standard um, base model. Okay. But you have to pull the fender system out at that time, which seems kind of silly. Really what we like to do in those cars is we just get a nice five channel DSP amplifier. In the past we've used uh, a lot of the Kicker Q-Class 1005s, but any five channel or four channel DSP will amp. And what you want to do is you want to go uh, wire for wire. And those we typically just do a front stage upgrade plus subwoofer. So we get some really nice high end components that go up front, because um, the tweeter in that thing has just got awful. And then we'll EQ it. We don't mess with the time alignment because Fender has already done that for us. So we don't we don't need to add the lay or anything like that. We just need to re-EQ it to make it sound better. And then of course we add a real subwoofer with some power. So like that five channel DSP amplifier is pretty nice to do that. And you know, it's all time aligned, so it's not like you have to worry about like, oh, what are the rear, the rear speakers? Just leave them alone, let them do their thing, let them play, mm -hmm. let them be nasty. You just wanna upgrade the front. So that's typically what we do in that. It's all gonna be after the amplifier. Rock on, but uh, do a five channel, just from, mm -hmm. yeah, okay. Can I roll components up front that's and it. two VCDS. way go axles? Sorry, the VCDS software is for reprogramming, and I'm sure there's tons of YouTube videos on how to do that, if you want to get into that. Um, there again, you know, that's one of those things that's like, hey, if you screw it up, <laughs> good luck. All right, uh, yeah, you can do components in the front, co axles in the back, and a subwoofer, no problem. Uh, we are not open on Memorial Day. No, like I say, the best the best way is to call Paul and uh, and set an appointment. What does Ground Zero needs to send you? Where? Oh, was, oh, I got the mouse right here. It says Ground Zero needs to send Fernando a Pure Four to try with the GS9. Told, what I, is I, the I, Pure I, Four? I'll have to look that up. I don't know what that is. Um, what does Active Crossover do? What? Hmm. What does it do? Wow, that's that's really okay. Hang on, let's talk about Active Crossover. All right. So for this demonstration class, we'll pull out the Morel Virtus Nano Integra 602 Carbons. For those of you who have never seen this speaker, this is a coaxial. This is a coaxial speaker in the sense that it has a tweeter mounted coaxially with the mid-range that's sharing the same plane, the axle point. Okay. So mid-base, tweeter. It has this little wire hanging down from it and it's got speaker leads. So this is what's called a bi-ampable speaker means you can hook up two amplifiers to it, or in this case, a passive crossover. You this, have syrup? Do I have syrup? Mm -hmm. I know, right? Um, this is a passive crossover. This is a pretty passive crossover. That's why I like using these for the demo, because this is pretty much the sexiest passive crossover that is reasonably priced. And this comes with the Morel. So what you have is an input, an output for the mid-range, and an output for the tweeter. By passive, it means that there is nothing going on. You physically just put power into it. The caps and coils inside of here, there's usually a cap and a coil for each one. This is a 12 dB crossover network. And it will go off and it will tell the tweeter what to play and it'll tell the mid-range what to play. And you don't have to think about it, it's, it's done. The only thing you can do in this is you want the tweeter a little brighter, no, factory zero, or a little less bright. You never go less bright on a morale. I don't think that's even possible. But it has the option to do it. Now, when you decide to go active, Active means you're going to put some form of a, uh, what do we have here? We'll grab this guy. Active means you're going to grab some form of a EQ DSP processor, like the Helix Mini DSP. Ooh, look at that. All right. 
And what this is going to do is this has outputs. So this has a six channel output. And you're going to put an amplifier on each one of these six channels. So you're going to take, let's say, a four channel amp, and you're going to come and channels one and two of that four channel amp are going to come out of this, go to that amplifier, and then that amplifier, those two channels are just going to power these tweeters. And then you're going to take the other two, three, and four out of this, go to that four channel amp, and those two channels are just going to power the two mid range. Now what we need is this is gone. This is out of the equation because this only has two inputs. It's not biampable. So we need what's called an active crossover, meaning we're going to go into the software that this has and we're going to say, all right, we want our tweeter to be crossed over at this specific frequency and we want this slope. So for example, like we said, this is a 12 dB network. So more than likely the tweeter is going to be backwards or out of polarity wired backwards from here to compensate for any crossover issues that you have when crossing over with a 12 dB Butterworth crossover. Oh, Butterworth, that's funny. Um, with this, you're going to pick a 24 dB Linkwix Riley, and then you're not going to have to put the tweeter out of polarity with it. This just got complicated, right? I know. Now, you have to know a few things about it, like what What's the tweeter frequency going to be? What is the top going to be? What, what does this play down to? So it, it becomes a little bit more involved as opposed to just put it in and go. So active means it's done through some form of a processor externally. Passive means it's just done with caps and coils. All right, class, yep. wasn't this fun? All right, Chris Harris, he dropped 499. Thank you, man. What's the best Thank size you, plastic to use for mounting tweeters and doing a 36 inch AMRAC? A 36, this, wow. Yeah, okay, so for the tweeter, uh, the tweeter it depends. is ABS, eighth inch ABS. Yeah, and depends where are you gonna put it. Most of the time we're using eighth inch ABS to do tweeters. Yeah. Uh, or quarter inch, uh, if we're cutting it out on a laser, it's gonna be quarter inch um, uh, plexi or yeah. whatever that yeah, clear yeah. stuff Acrylic. Is. Acrylic, thank yeah. you. Uh, and for the, for the amp rack. So you could go either half inch blown PVC or you can go quarter, quarter inch, inch ABS, ABS because yeah. the ABS is more rigid, mm -hmm. super rigid. Uh, it just comes down to what you're trying to do. So and where you want to put where it. you're going to put it, what you have, what you're screwing it down to. So when we decide what we're going to use, that's what we think about. Is like, okay, how, where is this going to go? Is height going to be an issue? Is depth going to be an issue? That kind of stuff. So, yeah. but those are the two things we use typically. All right, the Swiss Army man. He dropped ten dollars. Thank, Thank you. you. Just got a new 2020 Chevy 1500. Do you guys know of any harness for sale to be able to retain the factory head units and using the LC2i? Been searching for a month or so with no luck. Well, um, what year is it? It's a 2020. Ooh, it's. At this moment, no. probably not. Although, okay, so Metra, as the guy said earlier, that should be that Metra harness. But I don't. Yeah, that uh, should be that Metra harness that the, the tracks, tranks. Yeah. Yeah, that should. But, um, so the problem. All right, so here's what you want to look for. <laughs> yeah. Hi guys. How you doing? Um, Dean, I have a problem. Uh, All right, so what, so what you want to look for in a harness is your new harness looks like this. All right, it's these two perfectly square things. All right, these these guys. All right, so if you when you're looking, that's what you're gonna have to try to find. Um, what GM did this year is they got really weird and they put some of the speaker wires on this plug and then they put one positive negative speaker wire on this plug. This is a plug that's a beta that's not out yet, um, so we're not supposed to talk about it or show it off. But once this plug comes out, um, then you could easily just cut this and go to town. So this also disables, yeah, we won't, we're not supposed to talk about it. Um, but that's, that's what you're going to look for right at the moment. Yeah, no, but yeah. in the next two to three months, this guy will be out. Yeah. All right, sack. $10, thank you, man. Woo. It is possible to custom wire the iData Maestro on a 2006 GMC Sierra to get OBD2 
Diagnos on my 4100 NES. I see it's available for a 2007. Thank you for the awesome videos. It's like asking a Mac to, to no. it's like trying to download Windows on your Mac and just expect it to work. You need to go through boot camp or you gotta have another. It, it, it just doesn't understand the language. No. No. It's like when he starts speaking Spanish and I go, okay. <laughs> You're not talking to me, right? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Sorry, man. Can you please answer my question? Where? Which one? Um, first Sound Raiders. First Sound Raiders. Oof, Thank man, you, Fang of Truth. It's just a lot. I, I'm trying to get it, but... First Sound Raiders. Okay, what was... Oh, that was the Zach question? Yeah, yeah that was that question. First Sound Raiders. I got nothing. It's just like, it's, it's a lot of questions. Answer, ask a question again, man. It's, it's just lost, yeah. and it's just, you know, because it goes too far down, and it's hard to find. Uh, hi guys, can you recommend a small Bluetooth module? I can't connect to my amps to allow a head unit, less installation, and master volume knob, so hey. I can mount it to switch. Uh, okay, Metro, on Metro. Metro makes this piece that you're looking for. Metro mm -hmm. makes a Bluetooth volume knob. Hold on, I actually, I might have it? a, yeah, because um, I just sent it to Bill. Hold what on. do you call? Hold on, hold on, give me one second. I, I gotta find. Gotta find the tech. All right, it is. All right. Uh, here we go. It is the Metro. Dum -da -da -da. It is the Metro MPS BTK1 wireless Bluetooth controller. So go is ahead. That really? Yeah. Well, no. It's it's a um, it's a it's so that if you want to do a. Um, an audio system, which is Bluetooth and a knob. So let's say so you have a, uh, um, must use with the, okay, hang on, maybe that's not it. Uh, no. Plays music, media. All right, we'll check that out first, see if that gets you where you want to go. Oh, yeah, okay, no, that's it, because you got to buy the RCAs for it. Okay. Okay, yeah, I so read. So no, that's it. So hold on, real quick, again. Uh, for the Bluetooth controller, MPS BTK1, and then there's harnesses that you buy for how many RCAs you want to run. <laughs> so check that out. Okay. Oh go. my God. Oh, Rick Smith, he dropped five dollars. Thank you, my friend. And twenty-five hertz to lie. He said, go to the mall where the security guards tell you to leave and blast that guy box. That would be cool. I might do that tonight. Oh uh, really? Yeah. Uh, cool. How was the sound quality on the new D class amps over the old class A amps? Well, there weren't really any old class A amps. There were old class A B amplifiers, which is you know the 80s and 90s amplifier were A B. Very few class A for car audio. At least like your mainstream Rockford, Precision Power, Orion, uh, Hyphonics, and, and all those amplifiers back in the day. Um, no, you get what you pay for. If you buy a high-end Class D amplifier, they sound phenomenal. They're doing amazing things with Class D. They have, you know, with the advent of the DSP chip, chip, not the DSP, but uh, the ability to do sound uh, DAC-wise in an amplifier, it has really helped the Class D amplifier. They sound pretty exceptional. Uh -huh. One of my favorites, of course, right now is the Audio Control uh, Class you know, D-class amplifier. Sound Somebody amplifier. asked, oh, there you go, I have it. Uh, the okay. Q61 is a sound processor. The Q61. The audio control DEQ61. Yes, yeah, so the DEQ, that's the one thing I don't have. We gotta ask him for one of those. So the DEQ61 is actually the same as an LCQ1 with um, one extra thing. It has a delay button to add um, milliseconds of delay for the channel so that you can do time alignment uh so you just you, you click click and it's moving out 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 so you can do basic front stage time alignment with the dq61 but you also get all the eq bands just like an lcq one so think of it as an lcq one so think of it as the ultimate analog dsp okay yeah i know that was one of, it's a really cool piece i mean we used a bunch of them before the um the the 608 came out all right, I have Bionier ABH 2440 NES. Did you ever figure out that guy's question? And no, he, I, I told him to, to... Just ask again? Just ask again. Okay. Sorry. Um, okay. I have Bionier ABH 2440 NES, and the physical buttons stopped working. I reestablished, checked the wiring, and finally installed a bypass, and nothing works. 
Any advice for this? Do you huh. have any advice? No? No. I mean... What was the question again? I mean, it's nothing working. The mm -hmm. physical buttons stop working. The physical buttons stop working? Yeah. Restablish. Check the wiring. And finally install the bypass. But nothing works. Oh, the physical buttons stop working. I wonder yeah. if it's just the ribbon cable between the buttons on the face of the radio went bad. I mean, that's the bypass. The only thing the bypass does is unlock the, um, yeah, try the, try the reset button. Yeah, try, try, try reset. the reset button. Yeah. If the buttons stop working, then... You have a bad radio. Oh, dude, it's time to go. We need to burp the quad box. All right. What time uh, is it? It's, it's been an oh. hour. Oh! Yeah, I know. Let's let's get to it. Let's All get, right. Let's drop the quad. All right. All right, hang on. Oh. I'm going to open this because we, we need to start off the quad. You got the base knob? I kind of the base knob. Let me see the base knob. There you go. And there again, it's a kicker amplifier. We get to carry the base knob around with us. Ooh, right? Yeah, how cool is that? Alright, take your time. Find a track. Be cool. No hurry. No hurry. Whatever you're ready. I'm trying. It's all right. It's no hurry. I'm going to call it Dak. What's that? You got to give it a sec. Try pulling out and flip the cable around. What's that? It's it's not on. You just like hit the media button. I know it's always something. The joys of live. Do you have the base stuff? Yeah, it's super sitting on the table. Yeah, that one. Yeah. Turn the turn the base knob down. Turn it all the way down. Okay. was um, holding the TV. I have no idea what you meant. All right, so sounds terrible over the mic. Of course it sounds yes. terrible over the mic. Yep, yep. It's a mic. 
whatever. Anyways, don't worry. We'll do some more. We just, we had it. We wanted to show it to you. But, I know. We're going to film some, uh... Any window flex? Video. Yeah, actually, the, the sunroof on the top is just sitting there doing this. and But, um, we'll see how it goes. Uh, Got to play Quad City. Quad City DJs. Okay. Uh, check out Five Star After Dark tonight on our Five Star Instagram channel. That's where Haley and I like to hang out at nighttime. She's out of town. She's coming home tonight. So, mm -hmm. um, if we have time tonight, I'm going to take her to a parking lot and we'll drop some bass and try not to get arrested. So, that'll be fun, right? Isn't it? I hope. So, we'll go live on Instagram and we'll, we'll see what the iPhone can get for mic action on that. And yes. Yeah. Uh, right. Yeah, you can go and uh, patron. We you do can patron. sign up. Yep, yeah, you can we're on sign Patreon. up. Patron. We're definitely on Patreon. Uh, all right, so that's it. So let's end this thing so you guys can get out on the weekend. Audio control, coupon code for the D uh, DMRTA, $100 off. Make sure you go over to Wirecare. If you use uh, wirecare.com slash Wirecare Feeds America. So WCFA, so slash WCFA. Wear Care Feeds America. If you spend, if you use that access code, buy $25 or more, you'll get the t-shirt, you'll get ready, you can get a pair of safety glasses mm -hmm. while supplies last. If you don't use the code, you spend 50 bucks, you get the shirt, you get, you get, anyways. 5% of everything you spend this month is going to Wire Care Feeds America. Yep. So they're going to the, the, yeah, we'll talk more about it on Monday. DNF Tool Drawer is a place where you can find all the cool tools that we use and all the stuff we talk about here. Yep. Patreon, if you want to support the show. Teespring slash store slash five star. You can go and get cool five star t shirts. Dina Fernando, car stereo clips. And then, wire, Jesus, man, we need like a 12 trailer. old clean wire club on Facebook. Yeah, all, all right. right. A, lot of, a lot of stuff. I know, it's almost like homework. Yep. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. You guys have a wonderful night. Remember, it's Saturday night. What are you guys going to do tonight? Actually, some of you guys can go out. Some of you guys can't. For those of you that can go out, make sure you, you come home safe. You know, bring a mask. Take an Uber or Lyft home. Have lots yeah, of fun man. there. Um, yep, you look like Bandito. Uh, if you're staying home, well, definitely have fun there. But order some food in. Get yourself a pizza. You know, get some nice Italian. Get ready for Mother's Day tomorrow. I don't know. You know, have fun. What? You ready? I'm ready. End the show. See you guys. Bye.